we've always been scared of new technology, new knowledge, and how it could disrupt uh, the powers that be. Um, and so, you know, here we are at the advent of a new age. You know, we're we're working on very sophisticated, you know, self-adaptive hardware uh, that could scare some people, but you know, we think it's going to really impact the world positively. Tell me what you're working on now. You 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 left Google and you've been working on a new startup for how long now? Uh, a year and a half, roughly, um, and uh, you know, we're we're about twenty people. Uh, it's called Extropic. Um, essentially, I had a journey through quantum technologies, and I realized obviously those technologies are going to take some time to to really scale and, and, and mature and get to market. But I was seeing generative AI really become uh, the sort of core workload of a lot of uh, big tech players. And you know, I came from a background in physics, and and, and really wanted to um, uh, figure out how can we uh, push the limits of computing to the very limits of physics uh, uh, and, and really have the most energy efficient, uh, densest potential uh, compute uh, for AI and wow. the densest, fastest, most energy efficient. Because again, I, according to my principles of EAC, the more intelligence you have, uh, uh, you know, the faster the progress uh, towards scaling civilization will have. And so making uh, uh, intelligence much cheaper uh, is is a priority, and so we're we're engineering a whole new stack. It's called uh, thermo thermodynamic computing because we're operating at the thermodynamic limits, but it's really aiming at uh, speeding up generative AI massively. And of course, like if people are scared of GPUs right now and what current day silicon can do, they're going to be very scared of <laughs> what we're doing. And so I, I knew like if I, I if if we didn't prepare the culture for the advent of the technologies uh, that, that 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 we're building, we might become you know outcast or well hopefully not executed but uh you know <laughs> you, you get the gist um, yeah, they, they'll so. try to do that i really appreciate that elon and, and others are even more visible are standing up strong they're trying to get him unfortunately we're still in a free country they haven't taken him down yet although they're they're trying let's go one step deeper on the tech just so we understand it uh for some mm -hmm. of our you know for some of our listeners who are more technical like what, what what are you actually doing what are you what are you building yeah so so essentially we're we're building uh computers for neural information processing um, and they harness, they really harness fluctuations of nature and nature's uh, noise. Um, uh, essentially, electrons tend to jitter around, uh, and we can harness that jitter in order to make uh, systems that are far more energy efficient, far more data efficient, and, and essentially do the machine learning as a physical process. Wow. Right? So we're translating between the algorithms that usually run on a digital computer, and we're just instantiating them physically. And that leads to a sort of system that's not alive, but you know, it's 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 uh, adapting by itself, and it's 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 quite interesting. And and you know, obviously, for all the players today that are spending billions and billions of dollars on compute, this could be a, a big game changer. What's so, your what's your you timeline? Know. You think to get this to being being able to be used? Do you have a good sense? Um, I mean, uh, i I haven't announced any prototypes yet, but uh, you know, we have we have our first uh, test chips, and uh, we're iterating. But I think a couple of years from now we'll be able to have this in, in production. That's very yeah. cool stuff. Well, I gotta make sure we learn more about it. Before we lose you, Guillaume, I was just looking ahead. What's next for the for the EAC movement and, and how are you thinking about affecting policy? How are you thinking about, like, like what, what do you, you want to do with this movement? What else do you want to push with it? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. So far, it's just been very organic scaling. We haven't had a sort of top-down control. There's no centralized organization. You know, even the merch, I didn't even produce these. People gifted them to me, right? <laughs> it, it, it's been very permissionless. Like, you, everybody can contribute to it. So we do want to keep that aspect, but figure out how to scale it. But we, we are, you know, we do have to have a voice, let's say, you know, in Washington as these um, uh, legislations are, 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 are being pushed through or there's attempts to push uh, legislations through to s sort of um, stop open source uh, uh, from from uh, uh, growing and competing with big tech, for example, uh, by saying it's a dual use technology, uh, which, you know, we think is egregious, um, uh, or, you know, uh, give a sort of regulatory mode to, to the incumbents that, that we need to stop in order, again, to maintain sort of this equal opportunity to build this freedom to compute that is so important for, you know, innovators to just come forth and, and be able to participate in, in accelerating, uh, you know, AI progress and tech progress at large. hundred percent. Well, I, you probably know I have teams in 18 States and I just hired some people who are great in DC just for purposes like these. I know Mark Andreessen and his team is spending $75 million for the first time hiring people in DC to fight for these values. So you have, you have a bunch of allies out there. If you see stuff, you should make sure, make sure you flag it. You got a bunch of people eager to help with that. A final awesome. question. 
Guillaume, other than what you're working on, what innovation or technologies excite you the most right now? And how do we give people the sense that humanity is really just scratching the surface of its potential and, and there's, there's so much more out there? Yeah, I would say, you know, obviously the technologies for software in, in terms of intelligence and, and artificial brains like we're, we're building are super important. But then in order to really see progress in the world of atoms, we're going to have to transduce the that potential of intelligence into the physical world. And so I think robotics is going to see a boom in, in the coming years as we, you know, cross that threshold of having sort of, um, you know, match being able to have synthetic white collar intelligence. I think there's a few year gap between we'll be until we can uh, solve motor intelligence or blue collar intelligence, if you will, and give people operational uh, uh, leverage, right? You have intellectual leverage uh, now with ChatGPT, but eventually you'll have operational leverage. And that's where we're going to see serious progress in the world of atoms. We're going to see deflation and the cost of building things in the real world. And I think that's something everyone wants to see because things have slowed down far too much. Um, and so I'm really excited about that. And apart from that, obviously, uh, nuclear energy technologies Fusion is is great, still pretty long timelines, but there's progress being made that's very tangible, and and hopefully uh, fission uh, that can work around all all this overregulation. Um, so those are the most exciting technologies.